Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here with another lesson. I'm here in my virtual studios in beautiful Atascacita, Texas, and today we're going to talk about matter. And it's very important that we understand matter. All science is based on matter. Biology is the study of living matter. Chemistry is the study of matter and its changes and its composition. And physics is the study of the motion of matter. And so it's very important we understand matter and how matter is composed. So chemistry is the science of matter its composition and its changes. So let's talk about matter and its composition and then we'll talk about its changes in further lessons. Matter. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. So it's the stuff around us. So let's look at mass and volume. What's mass? Mass is the amount of inertia in an object and the more mass the greater the inertia. Kind of think of it like this. It would be very hard for me to move a large 18-wheeler truck. However, I could pretty easily move a small Volkswagen. Well, the small Volkswagen has less mass than the 18-wheeler. Why? Because it has less inertia, it has less resistance. So inertia is the resistance to change. And the more resistance there is, the more inertia. Well, the whole reason that something would have more inertia is because it has more mass. So kind of wrap uh, your mind around that and think on it. And I think you'll realize that mass and inertia have a relationship. Now, volume is the space that's occupied by matter. And all matter occupies a certain amount of space. And matter is just uh, the stuff. It's all the stuff around us. And the universe starts with two whole ideas. It's either mass or it's energy. And so let's talk about uh, the divisions here of matter. The divisions of matter, of course, all of the universe starts with energy and matter. And then matter is broken up into two parts, pure substances and mixtures. Now, before I go on from here, I think it's very important that a person who's going to study chemistry or even physics understand what matter is. And the more you understand about matter, the easier it's going to be able to wrap your mind around some of the ideas about the uh, atom. So sit down, get to know what matter is. And the beginning of matter, it's pure substances and it's mixtures. And pure substances are either elements and compounds, and elements break down to atoms, the building blocks of uh, the universe. And then compounds are combinations of the elements, and they're either molecules or formula units, depending on the type of compound. We'll talk about that later. Then you have mixtures. There's heterogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, and colloids. And colloids are kind of heterogeneous and homogeneous. But I think it's uh, something that needs to have their own group. Now, not every science teacher or everyone's going to agree with me necessarily. Some people may think totally different about colloids, but I think mixtures are either heterogeneous, homogeneous, or colloids. And heterogeneous are usually a type of suspension that separates into phases, and homogeneous are solutions. And then we have colloids. And I think uh, colloids are just suspensions that haven't completely separated. And we're going to talk more about that. So let's, let's get uh, moving here. Pure substances. Pure substances have one material, they are of a definite composition, and they have definite properties. Gold, copper, the elements are pure substances, and they are made up of one material, they have a definite composition, and they have definite properties. Gold is the same everywhere, silver is the same everywhere. Well, and the same thing with compounds. Water is the same everywhere, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Uh, sodium hydroxide is the same place everywhere. Sodium chloride is the same place everywhere. Glucose is the same place everywhere. Elements and compounds have definite compositions and definite properties. And we need to remember that as we begin to talk about uh, in further lessons when we talk about our physical properties and our chemical properties. Elements are the simplest form of a pure substance and they cannot be broken down by ordinary chemical means. That's what our elements are. So, major part of our pure substances elements. Now elements can be divided up into two main groups. Now we're going to talk about many groups that are on the periodic table, but right now two main groups you need to understand elements are, and that is elements are metals and elements are nonmetals. And notice hydrogen over there, notice right here, hydrogen is a nonmetal. They write it over here, but that has to do with its quantum mechanics, its 
configuration that we'll learn about later. But over here is where hydrogen really belongs. You need to start thinking about hydrogen as a non-metal. It's much more like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen than it is like lithium and beryllium and those types of metals. Okay? All right, compounds. Compounds are chemical combinations of the elements. And so we take things like hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and sodium and chlorine, other element elements, and they come together and they bond through a chemical means to make compounds like water. So compounds are chemical combinations of the elements. Mixtures. Now, mixtures are not pure substances. Mixtures are uh, the other types of matter, pure substances and mixtures. So mixtures are the other type of matter, and they have two or more, they're made up of two or more substances. They have no definite composition. They can be different no matter where you're at in the world. They're going to be different or could be different or even mixed differently. They have varying properties, and they are physically combined. There is no chemical combination here whatsoever. There's no chemical reaction or anything of that. Here. They are physically combined. First type of mixture that we're going to talk about here is a homogeneous mixture. And a homogeneous mixture does not separate into phases. It's equal throughout. And we sometimes call them solutions. Now, another homogeneous mixture besides solutions is alloys. And alloys are homogeneous mixtures of metals. But most homogeneous mixtures are going to be some kind of solution whether it be a mixture of gases, like our air is a solution of gases, or it would be a solution of uh, some solute and uh, solvent to make a solution. So solutions then consist of a solute and a solvent. The solute dissolves, like sugar, and the solvent causes the dissolving, like water. And you need to remember, water is a universal solvent. It dissolves more things than any other substance. So when I take sugar and put it in water, mix it up, that is a homogeneous mixture. It's going to completely dissolve, and we call that a solution. And the sugar is the solute, and the water is the solvent. Heterogeneous mixtures, they separate into phases, and they're unequal throughout. And a very um, common type of heterogeneous mixture would be vinegar and oil. They separate. Water and oil, they separate. Anything that will completely separate gives you a heterogeneous mixture. And then there are colloids. Now, colloids are large particles, not completely dissolved, and they remain suspended, causing the mixture to appear cloudy. And this cloudiness scatters light, creating something called the Tyndall effect. So the Tyndall effect is a good way to test on whether something is a suspension that is heterogeneous or whether it is colloid. But if you have a little experience out there, colloids are very easy to determine. And let me give you some samples of colloids. An aerosol colloid, which is a liquid in a gas, would be something like fog. An aerosol where it's a solid in a gas would be something like smoke. And then we have a liquid or we have gas in a liquid and that would be a foam. And a foam would be something like shaving cream or whipped cream. Oh, one of my favorite colloids. And then we have a liquid in a liquid which would be an emulsion, something like mayonnaise or a solid in liquid. And a solid in liquid would be like a fat dissolved in a liquid uh, to create a soul. And that's milk. Milk is a colloid. And uh, for years, I thought of it as a heterogeneous mixture. And in a sense, it is heterogeneous, but it doesn't completely separate. And so it's actually more of a soul and a colloid. And then, of course, then there's another one of my favorite colloids, liquid in a solid. That's a gel. And that would be something like jelly or a gelatin. And of course, as we always know, there's always room for jello. All right, let's recap here. We've talked about matter. We've talked about the types of matter. We've talked about substances and mixtures. We've talked about homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. And we've talked about colloids. So that was a pretty good lesson. Go over this again and listen to it as many times as you need to get the ideas down. But it's imperative when we talk about physical and chemical properties that you understand uh, matter and the divisions of matter. All right, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com and be sure to check out mrkazi'sworld.com where you can get PowerPoint videos and much, much more. And also subscribe to my YouTube. Here's the yucky legal stuff. Happy eyes, everyone.